part 5 of entity framework tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to handle model changes after the database is already created. This is continuation to part 4, so please watch part 4 before proceeding. Based on this employee class, entity framework has auto-generated this table TBL employees. Now let's say after the database is generated, we are changing the model class. What do you think is going to happen? By default, entity framework is going to throw an error. Let's look at that in action. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So this is the employee class. And based on this employee class, entity framework has generated this table TBL employees. Now let's go ahead and change this employee class. Let's add a new property of type string and let's call this job title. Okay, so the model class has changed. So now this model class and this database sample, they are not in sync. So if we build the solution, and then if we try to view the web form in a browser window, Entity Framework is going to detect that the model has changed since the database is created. So by default, Entity Framework is going to throw an error. Look at that, the model backing um, the employee DB context has changed since the database was created. So you may be wondering how you know the Entity Framework uh, is able to detect the model has changed since the database was created. That is with the help of a table called underscore migration history. Now, Entity Framework has generated these two tables for us. Look at that, departments and TBL employees within the sample database. Along with those two tables, it has also generated this table underscore migration history. And if we inspect the contents of that table, Notice the context key, it's called employee DB context. That is the class that we have generated um, in the previous session of this video series. So this employee DB context class inheriting from uh, the base DB context class. So that's the context key. And look at this model column. This is a, I mean, there is a hash value here. This hash value is generated based on this employee class. Okay, so when the database is created, it has computed a hash for this employee class. Now, if we change this class in any way, for example, if you add or remove a property, you know, the class has changed. So the hash for the changed class is going to be different from what is already stored in the database. And that's how Entity Framework is going to detect that the model has changed since the database is created. And if it detects that, by default, it's going to throw an error. So now let's see how to fix that. Now to fix the error, we have to tell the entity framework what to do when the model changes. And to tell the entity framework what to do when the model changes, we are going to make use of this global.asax file. So to our project, let's add a new item. And we want to add global application class. Now we discussed in detail, uh, you know, this global application class in ASP.NET video series. So if you're new, please watch ASP.NET video series. And within global.asax, we have this application underscore start event handler. Um, so this method is basically going to be executed once when the application starts. And this is where we are going to specify what we want the entity framework to do when the model changes. Okay, and to tell that to the entity framework, I'm going to make use of a class called database uh, class, and that class is present in the entity framework namespace. So system dot data dot entity, and this database class has got the set initializer method, which we use to tell the entity framework what to do. Okay, and we basically have two options here. We can tell the entity framework to drop create database always, or we can tell it to drop create database only if model changes. Okay, let's select the second option. And to this uh, class, we need to pass our DB context as well, and our DB context is employee DB context. All right, so we are basically telling the entity framework, so if you detect the model change, then go ahead, drop the database and recreate it. Okay, so let's view the web form in a browser window and see if that's what is going to happen. So now it's going to drop the database and then recreate it. Why? Because the model has changed since the database was created. 
I think we are going to get a different error here. That's basically because of the fact that you know the sample database is in use. Okay, so Entity Framework will try to drop the database, and then you know it it cannot do that because the database is in use, and that's what I think is the error we are going to get. It's still trying to drop it. Look at that. Cannot drop database sample because it's currently in use. So let's actually close SQL Server Management Studio so that um, the connection gets closed. Now, let's try to view the web form again in the browser window. So now it should be able to drop it and look at that. Um, you know, the processing is complete and the web form is not displaying any data because it has just created the database. So both the departments and employees tables will be empty. So let's open SQL Server Management Studio once again. And let's check if the database is recreated. Look at that, we have departments and TBL employees tables. And if you look at the columns there, notice that we have got job title. And obviously, both of these tables are empty. That's why we don't see anything on the web form. So let's go ahead and add some sample data to our database tables. Uh, for now, let's actually manually insert the data using SQL queries. Um, in our next video, we'll see how to use Entity Framework to automatically populate these database tables with test data. So to speed things up, I have already typed the required SQL script. So let's paste it here and execute it. So there should be some data now. Let's refresh this page. So now we are seeing the data, but we are not able to see job title. Why is that? That's basically because we need to add a bound column to this employee's grid view control. So let's go ahead and do that quickly. So within our web form 1.aspx, so we, here we have got uh, the grid view control, which displays uh, the employee's details. So let's add another bound field. We can either do it in the source mode or in the designer. Let's do it in the source mode as that will be a lot quicker. So we want to bind this field to job title column. And head a text, let's say job title with a space between job and title. So let's refresh this page. Look at that, we get the job title as well. So in our next video, we'll see how to populate the database tables with test data automatically using Entity Framework. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.